Welcome to my video. The subject here is how to program and utilize the IBM printer PC port for operating external electronics. We will be looking at how to set this up under Linux using uh, my modified version of PY Parallel that has been around for a number of years. I'll be adding some additional functions to it and we will be doing a lot more than just flashing a few LEDs. The nice part about this is the programs used for this can be easily ported over to the Raspberry Pi. Let's take a close look at the DB25 connector as you see here. It's tilted up uh, 90 degrees but if you look at the printer from the uh, connector from the back of your PC um, you will see this here. Note that we have eight LEDs on the uh, data port. Here's a, here's a strobe, that's an output connection, as are pins 14, 16, and 17. Um, pins 15, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15 are additional inputs. Um, and the remaining pins, 18 through 25, are all ground. Here is a little closer look at the pin designations and just what they do. Pin 1, of course, is an output. Once again, it's called strove, as is 14, which is line feed. 16 is reset, or it's called a nit, depending on whose spec sheet you're reading. 17 is select printer, or select. These are all 5 volt TTL level outputs. In addition, we have five inputs uh, being 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. And of course, pins 2 through 9 comprise a 8 bit data port with uh, pins with designations D0 through D7, respectively. To be able to access and use the printer port, we will have to make certain changes to Linux and the default configurations on boot up. So let's get into this. Open a file manager, a PC man file manager, rocks file, or whatever. Go over here to the folder slash dev or device and see if you don't have pair port zero. If it's there, um, you're pretty well good to go and it is present on most newer Linux kernels particularly from 2.6 and later. If not, assuming that you have um, sudo privileges, you have to type on the command line sudo on a terminal sudo modprobe ppdev enter. And if you check back it should be there now. Uh, it should be present and now we're ready to sort of move on to the next step. To have ppdev loaded on boot up, that is if you had to load it at all, you need to make a slight change. Now I'm using uh, Debian distributions for most of what I have. That should cover Ubuntu and a lot of other stuff. But generally you're going to have to go to, um, again, use a text editor, sudo text leaf pad slash etc slash module. You will have to add pp dev so, uh, and save and close. Alright, um, next we must gain access to the parallel port by removing a module called LP if it is present. So you're going to go to sudo remove mod rm mod LP enter. Okay, to remove this on boot up so you don't have to do this every time you uh, cut the machine on, again let's go back to a text editor like leafpad, sudo leafpad slash etc and the file is rc-local. Before zero 
you're simply going to put in remove mod rm mod space lp you save the file and close that will remove the module on boot up next you will still need to be a member of group lp if it's there anyway even if the module's not there you've got to be a member of lp so you're going to do sudo add user whatever your name is lp enter as i said before make sure you use sudo add user whatever your name is lp so that you can be a part of lp like i said even if the module is not there the uh, group could still be there and the best thing to do is be part of that group it also would help that if you add yourself to root that would be sudo add user whatever your name is root at this point with those saved and everything will reboot the machine and we will log back in next it's time to uh, install the py parallel port python software this is what we need this is the process that you need to follow assuming you open a terminal like lx terminal or a term or whatever you're using you'll probably be in your home directory first thing you need to do make directory pport mkdir space pport change directory cd space pport you should be in the pport directory now we're going to use we get um, what you see here it says pport.tar.gz on my website it will give you the full web address where you can download this assuming that you downloaded it and everything we need to um, dzip and dtar the uh, file and expand it back out and that's going to be tar zxvpfpport.tar.gz and it should produce several files if you put uh, ls enter and you'll see several files where you used to see one to install, simply type sudo python setup1.py space install enter. You'll see several lines of code. The last of it is going to be install is going to have the word egg in it and whatever else. Why I did this is I had to take the original py parallel software. It would not load. Uh, or install the uh, <laughs> frankly the setup and it was messed up I managed to trace down the correct install files and I also went into the functions there were several additional functions that are really handy to use um, that were commented out I commented them back in and made some other minor changes and so my setup my version of PY Parallel does more than the original. Let's look once again at the electrical connections on the DB25 connector as it comes out of the back of your PC. Either though this is turned at a 90 degree angle left, it still will should be able to easily un be understood. Look at here on pins 2 through 9, if you can see them in the video. I have 8 LEDs um, connected to ground, and in between I have 8 470 ohm resistors. This is my 8-bit data port. The little piece of software we're going to look at and configure next to test this port will use these 8 LEDs, so you will have to have it okay let's move on all right if everything went correctly you should have py parallel installed and we are ready to try out our first little demonstration program what you need to do here is open your text editor leafpad guinea beaver whatever you're using and open up a new file you can see it here on the video but you can actually cut and paste it on the main page of my website 
you will cut and paste this code on um, your text editor and remember the uh, folder we made earlier called pport save this file as count.py in the pport folder now let's look at what this will do if you are in um, the folder pport open a terminal in that folder and type the following python space count.py enter. The program that you uh, saved in the folder will count from 0 to 255 on the 8 LEDs connected to the printer port. After it reaches 255 all the LEDs will be turned off and you will see printed on the screen goodbye. Let's look at the very line at the top of the file that you saved earlier to pport. You will see it here. There's your hashtag, exclamation point, user bin environment Python. What that tells Linux is that this file, if it was to be an executable file, that we are to use Python. Okay. To make this an executable file, we will have to change the file permissions. So back in terminal again, with this file, you will go chmod space plus x space count dot py enter. All you have to do now from the terminal is dot forward slash count py and it will execute without having to type in Python. In fact, you can rename the file to leave off the dot py. It would be from terminal mv space count py space count. Now if you type um, dot forward slash count it will still execute and work as before. Finally, what if I want the uh, program count and that's what it is. It's, a pro it's an executable file or program now. How, I would want it to execute anywhere that I type on a terminal without having to be in the folder or type Python or anything else. All I have to do is the following. sudo mv, that's move, the file count, assuming you're in the folder pport with the file count, and I want to store it at user slash local slash bin. You hit enter. You can be anywhere in any folder anywhere now and from the command line you can type count and the LEDs will count as before. So that's a quick, quick look at um, how to use Python, a quick use look at how to use Linux. Our next installment though is we're going to be looking at closer into Python and we will write some very interesting electronics control programs using the printer port. Until then, this is your host, Lewis Laughlin. Uh, please visit my website and look around and see what you can find. Have a great day.